Hi, this is part two of the demo of the Arduino data web server. If you haven't seen part one, you might want to go see that first because that's when I actually show it run. But on this second part, we're going to dive into code. So let's get to it. Um, let's see, where should we start? Okay, uh, these are the URLs that you've seen before. And then um, there's nothing magical about these, uh, the URL itself. I simply pick these words, but you could change it to whatever word you want. Uh, we'll see later. And there's also not much magic about the parameters. You're going to have as many parameters as you want. Uh, the parameters could be strings uh, or it could be numbers like here. It doesn't matter, as we will see in the code later. Um, so yeah, this is the UR, This is the address of the Arduino itself, which we'll talk in a minute. Okay, let's say oh, let's just dive in the code. These first three lines are just includes that we need uh, because we use uh, these are required by the oops. These are required by the the Ethernet routines. And this is uh, because I use uh, string compares and string concats. Okay, this takes some explanation. This took me uh, some time to, to understand what's going on. Um, apparently, the MAC address it could be anything. Um, this just happens to be some number I found on my network, and I just changed one of them such that uh, it will be different. I think as long as this is unique within your network, it's okay. So the next one, of course, is the actual IP address of the Arduino itself, because it will become a web server when we want to hit it from a web browser or from a Windows program or a PHP program, whatever, wherever we want to go access the Arduino, then we would need an IP address. So this happens to be my local IP address. Uh, I just picked 12 because it, there's not a device there that is 12. You could easily find out uh, by trying to do a ping. Uh, probably could do an IP config here, and it will tell you the IP address of your current machine, and then it will tell you the IP address of your router. And if you go log into your router, it will also show you all the devices that is currently using a number. Basically, what I did is just pick one number that is not on that list, or you could simply do a ping. And let's say I pick 13. I know there is no device there, so it's not responding. Whereas if you pick something that there is a device in there now, it will actually reply. So that is the Arduino talking back to us. Oops, it's scroll off. So this is the Arduino talking back to us. Whereas if I do 13, there is no device there, so it's not talking. So do this to your network. Uh, typically, do, this will be 10, 0, 0, 1, uh, for your router, but my network is slightly different. Okay, so put your number in here. Make sure it's a, a number that is free, that doesn't have another device. And then that's the address that you will actually use in the browser when you actually hit it. This is the same number as that. OK, so let's open the web server on the Arduino port 80 is HTTP. These are some global variables that we will use later. And these are some ports that I set up in your app. Of course, you will do whatever you need to do in here. Set up your input ports, your output ports, whatever devices you have in there. And I kind of cheated, as you saw in the video there, that I do not even have a resistor. I don't have a breadboard in here. And all I did is I connected the LED directly to pin 7 and 8. So on pin, on pin 7, actually, I set it too low all the time and actually used pin 7 as ground. So this is the cathode of that LED, the shorter leg. And then this is the anode, the longer leg is a positive is on pin 8. So rather than having a breadboard and wire and all that stuff, so the whole thing is compact in here for an experiment. OK, so that set up the sample port. And yours will be a lot more complicated than that. Oh, yeah, I think we already talked about the potentiometer. We'll just uh, review real quick. 
uh, one side goes to plus plus five, the other side goes to ground, the middle side goes to analog zero. And then we will actually later on read analog zero. And that's how it changes value. Okay, get ready for setup. Uh, let's see, okay, we are using these two guys that we set up up here. So that starts the ethernet and that starts the web server. And this is all for debug. The, if you're done and you need more uh, memory, you could kill all these, these serials, uh, serial begin and serial print, all that stuff that we'll see later for debugging that I use. Uh, and then I set up those sample ports, which you already saw. So let's get going. OK. I set up a buffer, 128 characters, should be plenty. And this will be basically uh, used for the request. So as the browser uh, requests something, this actually, as you can see on the debug, is sending, where does it start? Right here. It's actually sending get space slash all, all this stuff that was sent by the browser. This causes, I wish you wouldn't go behind. This causes <laughs> that, okay. Um, okay, so as, as the data is being request, uh, as the browser sends that request, it will be placed in here for us. So let's keep going. This line waits until there is some data available. When the data, some, there is some data available, we actually uh, use it to. Come on, find that. We're actually going to go see that data and put it in our buffer. Can't get the whole thing in there. I guess you just have to scroll it. Okay. So we assume there's no data yet. Make sure it's still connected. If there is some data available, we read it one character at a time. If that character is a new line character, then that means we're done reading that whole line of command, the get command that comes from the browser. And we get out, and then we basically use the data that is in the buffer. But of course, the first character will not be a return. So make sure that we have not reached uh, the maximum of our buffer. Save that character into our buffer, increment our buffer, and just keep waiting until we hit the uh, new line character coming from the browser. When that happens, we get out. There's nothing in here other than just print, oops, see, <laughs> other than printing the actual uh, buffer size for debugging purpose. Uh, I have two utility routines, print number and print string. All it is just a encapsulation of a couple debug strings. So you give it a label and you give it a value. And this one is a string, this one is a number because a number requires that over there and a string does not, that's why there's two of them. Okay, so let's go back. We were over here, so we were waiting for requests. When the requests come back, we, we end up filling the buffer and then we actually say, what is it that was sent? So we call this routine. This one is kind of long, but it's pretty straightforward. I, I put a lot of debugs and I put a lot of lines in here, just keep them separate to make it easy to read. So basically, we're gonna have a whole bunch of temporary variable to know where the slashes are. So we'll find the slashes that are in this URL here, basically. And even though we, our requests on the browser look like this, by the time it hits the web server, i.e. the Arduino, it actually looked like this. So there's a space there, there's a space there, and we are mostly interested in these, of course. So let's see how that works. Uh, the 
string string is a string search so we're gonna look in our buffer that we just received looking for a slash when we find that slash we copy the whole string from that slash and then actually we add one so passing that slash so let's say we found this one we are actually going to return this whole string that's what slash one will contain and the next one we skip this first slash of course because we're going to start from the slash one which is that position right there and we, we're going to actually look for another slash and then we will find this one and then we do a plus one again so we start over here and that's going to be the second string and the third string of course will be this one and then the last one is different the last one is looking for a space and just in case there are no two slashes I start looking for a space from here from the first slash uh, from the second slash I'm sorry and so if this, uh, if this slash isn't here it will still find that particular space and then finally if there was no uh, if the slash that we found is greater than because we end up finding this one then the space you know if we find this slash instead of that slash in, instead of this slash then we set the slash tree to be over here because I don't want to return 1.1 it will basically return the same parameter again it will return this one twice okay and then we print all that stuff as you can see over here yeah I should have left it uh, brought this up so this is the buffer right here and then those are that's the first slash uh, in in the sample in here it says CMD but then our our actual URL it is actually digital write and then skip that we got the eight skip that we got the one and then skip that we got the space and we're done and basically by knowing where the positions are now we actually build uh, the individual parts and you do that by yeah this was a bug that I discovered um, apparently string copy does not automatically add a terminating a string terminator so um, I end up using string and cat which does add a string terminator but to concatenate a string of course I have to initialize a string to blank first so that's what this is it initializes a string to blank and then we are going to copy into the command variable if you remember way up here we have these variables nothing magical about the 15 I just picked 15 because it seems safe enough number that let's see how long is digital right anyway 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so 15 is fairly safe if you have longer or shorter you can adjust these okay we are talking about these slashes so um, we're gonna copy from slash one which actually is right here we're gonna copy from that position and we're gonna copy the length this minus that minus one because we end up over here so minus one and then we subtract this so end up with the length of that string that's what this expression does and similarly the other ones are exactly they're similar you know subtract the difference between the here and here minus one because of the uh, slash and then save that into prime one I probably should make this eh. okay so we got three parameters and a command print that out for debug and then we uh, just got done parse receive request and finally we can actually do the command 